This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Here are some things we noticed this week. For the first time in many months, the world heard directly from Bradley Manning, the former Army private who is allegedly the source for some of the most explosive WikiLeaks reports over the past few years, from stories about how the U.S. has conducted the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to revelations about how U.S. foreign policy is conducted behind closed doors. Those stories made headlines around the world and in the U.S., but what happened in a military courtroom in Maryland barely registered. The hearings focused on whether or not Manning's treatment was lawful. Some have said it amounted to torture. But for the corporate press, the first account on the matter from Manning himself just wasn't news. The New York Times didn't even send a reporter, just ran a wire story from AP. The Times public editor weighed in, said she thought the paper should do more, but the D.C. bureau chief disagreed, saying, As with any other legal case, we won't cover every single proceeding. In this case, doing so would have involved multiple days of a reporter's time for a relatively straightforward story. As professor and blogger Corey Robin pointed out, those didn't seem to be the rules when covering the O.J. Simpson case, for example. But more. How can you really argue that the trial of the country's foremost whistleblower, in which some contend it's the government that should be in the dock, is not worthy of coverage because it's too straightforward a story? Well, from the undercovered to the overcovered, the wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the so-called fiscal cliff continues. One of the core Republican complaints is that tax hikes on the wealthy aren't what they appear to be. Well, that's an easier case to make when there are people in the media who are willing to make it for you. Here's CNBC's Maria Bartiromo on Meet the Press. On taxes, you really can't put all of the taxes into one category. Dividend taxes, for one, is probably the biggest threat to the markets and the economy right now when you're just looking at taxes. And dividend taxes are not a rich tax, nor are capital gains. You're talking about pension funds, 401k plans, invested in companies that pay dividends. If you're expecting a dividend tax to go from 15% to 44%, that completely removes the opportunity or the incentive to buy dividend-paying companies. And that's going to hurt not just the rich. That's going to hurt everybody if, in fact, we were to see that. This is a favored right-wing talking point, that actually dividends and capital gains income are spread broadly throughout society. But it's not true. As this chart from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities shows, the overwhelming majority of dividend and capital gains income is concentrated among the very, very wealthy. Talking about retirement accounts is a misdirection, since these have nothing to do with the rates on capital gains income. If journalists are going to treat this fiscal cliff seriously, they should challenge this kind of misinformation. Well, the programmatic cuts that the crisis talk is meant to scare us into would have real effects, of course. And unsurprisingly, these would be felt most keenly on those already struggling, who are rarely acknowledged at all in the corporate media. But one exception was a December 5th cover story in USA Today. It's a moving article by Marisol Belo called, For the Poor, Recovery is a Mirage. Bello speaks with Nancy Scott, who had to choose between exhausting her paycheck on rent and utilities or living in her truck. There are tens of millions of Americans, Bello notes, who aren't thinking about fiscal cliffs, or holiday shopping for that matter. But if you wonder why you don't see more of this kind of sober accounting of that economic reality, USA Today reminds you with a virtual slap with an article directly below Bellows that shows more typical priorities. A calling card for the Café Riche alerts readers to a new super-limited $450 gift card from Starbucks. Just in time for the holidays, the trend-setting coffee behemoth today will be at the forefront of what could be yet another cultural hot button, the super-premium gift card, reads the press release, I mean, news story also revealing that the card is made of etched steel and that it will only be sold on a luxury goods website. Well, this kind of thing is bad enough in the business section, pretending to be a story about market trends. On the front page and juxtaposed with real reporting, it should be an embarrassment. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.